Hey guys and welcome back. So in this video I want to continue talking a little bit about how we can um, uh, improve a little bit on the, um, on the workflow when we take motion capture data from IPy uh, uh, MoCap Studio and uh, how specifically we can keep uh, get our route here uh, to follow us along. Um, okay, so uh, to begin with I will uh, open up uh, Motion Builder and uh, what we're going to do, be doing in this video is to uh, create a template that we can uh, just uh, open up and use when we have mo motion capture data uh, that we want to work with. Um, so we want to um, eliminate as much uh, extra work as possible so that we can just start working with the animation. Okay, so uh, this is the SK mannequin uh, a file that we just exported from Unreal Engine. I'm just going to open that up and expand the scene and yeah, as I remember from last time I uh, had uh, to take the pelvis and uh, reroute that to the SK mannequin um, node here. Uh, so I'm just going to start off by doing that also. And um, one thing I will probably want to do is to use uh, the control rig uh, in Motion Builder if I... Uh, um, using Motion Builder, that's probably the reason why you uh, use this because it has a nice control rig. Um, so we're going to start off by defining a skeleton and um, if you haven't done this before you will probably start off by mapping up the, each of these um, joints. So you want to select the pelvis and you want to select spine and maybe you want to be able to click out here so let's go ahead and right click the um, the mesh and uh, create a group and uh, hide that away so we can see the skeleton that means we can turn it on or off like this so and you probably want to map all this up uh, just uh, this way but um, as soon as you have done this whoops turn something uh, instead of doing that, uh, or once you have done that, you want to save uh, that skeleton definition so you can just reuse it, uh, which I did. So I'm just gonna skip that part and load in my definitions here. So it's gonna light up with some green uh, warnings saying that the right arm and left arm doesn't seem to be parallel with the x-axis and that's because he is on an A pose. So uh, I'll click out here and hit Control um, F. So I'll switch to the front view and then zoom in on the shoulders and arms here. Uh, so go to the rotate and I use a snap rotation of five degrees. So just gonna straighten this arm out and get that parallel and this one up, same. So like this and like this. And then hit the uh, control T to go to the top view. Uh, and then we want to swing that a little bit in and this one a little bit out. And as you can see now, the left arm turned green. So Motion Builder is satisfied with this. So let's just keep that. And we're going to do the same on the other side. So now everything is screen. So press control E to get um, to the producer view. You can also see the shortcuts up here if you need uh, need to. So uh, what we need to do now is just to characterize this guy here. So we have a character here, um, and I'm going to rename this to SK Mannequin Character. And uh, if we click the uh, SK Mannequin Character. Uh, and switch to the character definition, we can click characterize and that is actually the same as just uh, clicking this uh, little lock character uh, thing. Um, and that's gonna create a characterization. Um, so now we can uh, create a control rig and we can say select FK and IK. So this is uh, the rig in Motion Builder, so actually it's two rigs because we have an uh, IK rig, which is all the, the round ones affects us here, and uh, the, um, the ones in the middle I'm clicking here, they are the, the green, uh, the yellow ones, they are the FK uh, rig. 
Um, so I'm not going to go into details on how that works because I still don't fully understand how it it, it you know, does that. So um, although that it um, you can control blend settings for <coughs> sorry um, how how the influence where the influence is going to come from uh, the FK and or the IK. So uh, this is basically the um, 100% IK and so on. Blah blah. I'm gonna get back to that maybe. Um, anyway, um, so I'm gonna take this and uh, switch to character settings and actually uh, deactivate it and then uh, hit this one, the skeleton, so we can see the original skeleton. Uh, so I like this setup here because that means that once I uh, open up my, um, my mocap data on this, I'll merge this in. I'm actually ready to just put this onto my control rig where I can start working with it. So I'm gonna go ahead first and save this as uh, SK mannequin underscore MB for motion builder. Okay, so let's pretend we just shot a uh, mocap data and uh, we exported it already, just like we did last time uh, this, with this one. Where you where you would be using this no root that we created last time. Um, so we're gonna hit motion file import, and all we need to do now is just to select this, and uh, just hit import, and merge. It's gonna say it can't merge everything, but almost everything. And all we need to do now is just to take the pelvis and remember to reroute that to the root here. And that's, that, that means that now we uh, have this uh, rooted already. So um, next thing uh, we uh, can do is just to plot character to control rig. So it's going to take all the animation from the skeleton and put that onto the control rig. Make sure you have unroll here and uh, no constant key reduction and whatever. Actually, maybe I should plot this at a higher rate because it's caught with uh, 60 frames per second by don't really know if that's a good idea. Anyway, so let's go plot now, and uh, let's see if we can get the the root to follow our character around. Uh, just as a little last uh, thing to do here, um, I am gonna do one thing though. I'm gonna say I know for for certain that I have a clip here somewhere at four hundred and seventy five. And I have a. Uh, it's gonna end at five or seventy-five. So this clip in particular, I want just to work with. So I'm gonna switch to the story, and I'm gonna insert a character animation track, and select my mannequin character, and insert this uh, plot hole scene to the current take. And where did it go? Plot holes in. Oh, sorry. Uh, insert the current take, of course. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so it's going to take this little piece here and uh, I'm going to zero that to the beginning. And um, let's see. So we have this animation here. So I'm going to right click this and say frame start and end. So it's going to zero this out. So it's uh, zero to 100 frames. And I think that's uh, what we need to do here. So let's plot this to the back to the the scene and disable the story. So um, now we just have 100 frames to work with. So it's a little bit easier once we import it again. Um, so uh, actually, let's go ahead and do a little extra thing here. Uh, let's uh, enable the story again and. Uh, turn on ghosting and uh, let's see if we can uh, straighten this up a little bit so just watch this area here so it's gonna point forward now so let's just say minus 90 this looks okay and then reset the translation to zero oops like this um, so now he walks in a straight line instead of just uh, diagonally. Oh, I do because it was me. <laughs> okay. Um, 
So uh, let's, uh, with these uh, changes, let's uh, plot this back to the scene and turn off the story. Now we have uh, the animation walking forward. Um, so let's, uh, as a last thing here, uh, take the, this uh, route and get it to follow us. Um, and we're going to do that by going to the asset browser, adding a position constraint. And it's gonna pop up over here on the constraints, the position. And you wanna get the root um, and drag that in on the constraint object and select your hip effector and um, hold X down on the keyboard and then left drag this down here. Okay. Um, and before you hit zero, you wanna select the root and you want to click properties and make sure you have uh, all type selected here otherwise you won't see degree of freedom so select that and uh, make sure i think it's um, usually it's uh, the y-axis but since this uh, as you can see i don't want it to move up um, so but since this is a unreal engine it's a bit uh, awkward but it's actually the, the c up so if i lock this one and hit zero you can see it doesn't move but uh, once I um, scroll the animation it's gonna follow me nice and fine just forward uh, so let's uh, it's gonna move a little bit from side to side which is something we need to fix uh, but um, I'm not gonna bother with that for now just uh, bear with me uh, for this so uh, in order to get this on into uh, onto our skeleton again uh, we will go to the character and we will with this active plot this back to our skeleton so plot and now we have uh, the root and everything moving and if we turn on the visibility of this we have a character walking like this and i didn't fix the feet because they are sticking onto the ground so but that's something that's actually kind of the reason why i wanted to do this uh because i wanted to yeah, fix up some some movement on the feet and make it uh, also loop um, but that's uh, something for later anyway uh, we are ready to motion file export this so let's call this uh, the walk test 2 and we're just gonna export this take here export and now we can go back in here and import that All right, so now we have a walking animation and as you can see he's uh, walking in place. Um, uh, we do actually have root motion uh, on this. So if I were to enable root motion, motion on this, this would actually drive him forward. Uh, that's pretty cool, I think. Um, yeah, and um, we can test the blending. You can see, uh, well, this is the, the the normal one. So let's take the blend between this one and this one. So as you can see, he's not dipping underground now. He's uh, though sliding from side to side, but that's because uh, the first animation we imported from uh, part one uh, had a stationary uh, root, and this one is. Uh, it's actually moving so yeah maybe a bit confusing uh, the way I said it <laughs> but anyway that's uh, how it works uh, and this will um, hopefully enable you to get a lot of animations in pretty fast uh, and not be uh, uh, fighting with stuff like this which has been driving me crazy for a long time so uh, yeah Hope you liked it and um, be seeing you in the next video. So bye bye.